Welcome back for the chapter two review. This video is going to be problems eight through 11. And it looks like somehow my uh, tabs got off. So it looks like it's labeled eight, eight, nine, and 11, but it's really eight is number nine on the answer key and um, nine is number 10 on the answer key. And then it goes back to 11 and should be okay after that. I apologize. So number eight says <clears throat> we have the F function and the G function, and we're going to evaluate at different at different um, values. So evaluate F at four. So this is going to be opposite of four squared plus five times four. So this is going to be the opposite of 16 plus 20. So the answer should be four. Remember that you're taking the opposite of x squared. If we wanted, if they wanted us to square the negative, then it would have been a negative, it would have been this. The negative would have been inside of in a parenthesis. That's not what they wanted. Then it says take f of a plus one. So the opposite of, and now I'm going to put a plus one inside the square plus five times a plus one. This is important one to look at because I noticed on the homework, <clears throat> I caught some of you, this a plus one squared is a thing. So let's just go up here and do that. a plus one squared is a plus one times itself a plus one, which becomes a squared plus a plus a plus one. And that simplifies to a squared plus two a plus one. And we're going to take the opposite of that. And then distribute the 5. <clears throat> then we'll have a negative a squared minus 2a minus 1 plus 5a plus 5. And then when we collect our like terms, we have a negative a squared plus 3a and then plus four. He says G of a negative seven. So square root of two subtracting a negative seven is the square root of two plus seven is the square root of nine is equal to three. And it looks like B on the answer key, if you've already printed it out, I'm going to correct. If it B should, this should be the answer for B. It looks like B on the answer key must have put it into this, into the G function. Um, so I just caught that. Okay, <clears throat> D says G of one. So if I put one in, it will be the square root of one, which is just one. Okay. Number nine wants us to graph this function here, which we're going to do square root functions later on. But just to graph this, if we put it in Desmos, when X is four, one, two, three, four, it starts at the square root of zero. So if you put anything less than four, it's gonna be the square root of a negative, which we can't do. And so it's gonna be everything going this way. So the domain is gonna start at four. We can include it. So it's gonna get a bracket and it will go up to a positive infinity. Okay, number 10. So it's determine whether the set of points here define a function. <clears throat> if it defines a function, then there will be no x's that get repeated. And it looks like one is trying to go to a negative one, but it also wants to go to zero. So it's not a function. Because x you know, because one is going to a negative one, but it's also going to zero, which it cannot do. Okay. 
<laughs> Number 11 says, let f be defined as follows. So f is the function that is 2x minus 4 when x is less than or equal to 2, but it's a negative 2x plus 4 when it's greater than 2. Sketch the graph of f. And then also find a single expression for f in terms of absolute value. So um, this is actually starts at 2 and goes this way. You can put these in, in Desmos here. And you can just find some points and put them in a... Um, a table and graph them. The absolute value function then is the absolute value of 2x minus 4. Um, because this gets flipped over. Catch me back for another review video.